That's First time back in Australia since 2020. Just tell me how pleased you are to be back and competing at the Australia Open. Yeah, it's great to be back. I was here uh, before COVID, my last time here, 2020. So definitely good uh, to be back here in Australia um, and just be competing, really, playing on on the tour. Hopefully, I started... It's the first time I started the season in a few years, so hopefully I can have more of a, a proper season um, and uh, build some momentum and hopefully get up the rankings again. How confident are you in your body and particularly in, in the knee that's been such a problem? Yeah, it's uh, something I'm always going to have to manage, but having the, the time out was, you know, was really long, so to be able to play again is just... I'm just very thankful for and uh, yeah it just feels like uh, coming coming back I'm sort of feeling my way into it again just have zero momentum after pretty much I think it was about 20 months sort of tournament to tournament so I took time out after US Open to feel better again which which uh, definitely helped me so, like, as I said before, it'd be nice to sort of have more of a, a season now um, throughout the year. It won't be um, probably as many tournaments as I would have played before I got injured, but um, it might be sort of a week here and there where I would have played, but I'd decide to just take it off to, to look after the body. So to get to get through the year would definitely be a bit, you know, an aim of mine and also ranking wise. Um, I have my protected rankings, but obviously they don't last forever. So I use them when I can, and then when I've when I finish them, that would be my ranking, and then keep trying to go up. But yeah, in terms of believing in myself, I definitely do. I know I have the game to to play at the highest level, um, and uh, hopefully the work I've done in and my rehab and and strength um, will allow me to to stay fit to be able to compete. Did that period off after the US Open? Um, did a big physical block, to be honest. I still still wanted to get better. Um, was able to play, but not really at the standard or, or physically the level I wanted to. So I um, spoke with the people that were helping me and decided to do that. Um, and it really helped. The I wanted to play uh, the Helsinki Challenger, but actually came a week too soon that's why I played that um, pro league um, the week after um, so yeah it was it was okay I mean I hadn't started I only played the US summer and uh, it was it, the priority was getting the body right so um, it, it helped me really well and then I played that pro league then ended up falling into uh, the tennis off season I would have liked to play to on, but so I did some training in Dubai and then came straight here. How do you feel you played in, in the, the matches you played the last couple of weeks? Uh, the first, the second one was definitely better. I felt more um, in control of my game, got into the match a lot more. Um, and the first one, I felt the tennis was really quick. The conditions in LA were quick in general, but playing Yannick. Um, and I guess the way I play, it's, it was quite fast tennis and not easy to sort of get rhythm into the match. And you're, when you haven't played a lot of tennis, you're always, I guess, searching for rhythm. Um, and uh, in the end, I felt the match just went really quickly. Um, it was sort of over before I knew it. But the second one was a lot better. And reflecting back on those two matches, it was like I'm improving and it just shows that the little things here or there, even though they're little things, they make a big difference when you're sort of getting closer to, I guess, playing as well as you'd like to. Um, some decision making, also execution. Um, it's the game I got broken, I had two, two or three quick unforced errors, so little things here and there. But I've been practicing well. Being here has allowed me to to practice with the the better guys, the best guys in the in the rankings um, and it's a good leveler to see where I'm at but um, just being out here sort of putting myself out there is, is all 
sort of money in the bank, as, as you'd say. How much has 2018 been on your mind, being back here, and, and kind of what you achieved then, and, and what are your memories like? Are you trying to channel those positive, positive memories from then? When, you, when I think back to 2018, it's always good memories. Um, sort of walking around the, the grounds or in the player area on the court, um, thinking back to it. But um, there's just feels so long ago because so much has sort of happened since then. Um, and I haven't really had any sort of, I haven't had any run here since um, with the years after playing um, and uh, injury slash COVID. So it just feels so long ago, but it is nice to come here. Um, I know I can play well on these courts, and because I did, so it's kind of like it was great. I played in 2018 really well, but it sort of does doesn't make any. It makes no difference to sort of this year because it's been so long. Which of the top players in the locker room have sort of put their arm on your shoulder and said, you'll be OK or you'll get through the injuries? Because, you know, it's experienced by many players, but which of the top players have uh, been a comfort for you? Yeah, no, none, really. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, no, none of them have actually just said, you know, you'll get through it, how are you getting on? Um, maybe just not in that way. I've, I had, I've had, a, I had a couple of messages in America um, when I was when I did play my first few matches back, just saying good, great to see you back, and deserve a bit of luck, you know, to to play. Um, but uh, who um, I think I mentioned before, I chatted to Kubler a little bit because um, he had some knee injuries. Um, yeah, it's just kind of passing in the change rooms. You just by chance, even Kokonakis last week. Um, I think he, it was his elbow or shoulder, whatever it was, and he was just saying, yeah, it takes time and um, it's frustrating at first because you, you know how well you can play, but you just can't produce it when you want to straight away. And a lot of it is it takes time and getting back and that's all sort of, you know, it's positive to hear that at the same time. Um, you're always impatient. You're like, oh, I want to get back now and I want to play better now but I know inside it does take time it doesn't to get to where I was before took sort of years of training and um, experience in matches so when you suddenly sort of go right down you don't just suddenly get it back again it, it will take a bit of time but um, it is a it is sport at the end of the day an individual sport at that as well so there's not it's not I wasn't really expecting a lot of love and people you know some nice people around and good people but not they're not people like your sort of family and uh your team that are like really wanting you to it's um it's a tough one even like uh people have gone through it know what it's like and and feel for you but it's not like they uh are feeling really sorry for you because they've got their own things to concentrate on as well on a similar theme, you said it in New York, I think it felt quite strange being back on tour and back mm. in the locker room. Do you still have that sort of strange feeling or do you feel a bit more comfortable and a bit more, hey, I'm back on, on the tour? Definitely better now, yeah, for sure. Been around it more. And I think once you play some matches and and uh, and lose, you sort of have the feeling of losing and, and then that fight comes back into you of like, oh, I really want to improve, where can I improve? It's not so much like, oh, it's amazing to be back. It starts to turn like I'm in it now and I need to, that sort of fight comes back into you. Um, it's a sort of change of mindset. And um, coming back here because it's been so long is a little bit like things, a new environment is new surroundings. Um, but in terms of being on court with the players, it, it's a bit more like it's just another session now that I'm looking to improve or another match. Draw might be a little bit kinder to you. How do you feel about playing Yannick again? Um, I wasn't really sort of hoping or this or that, only because I feel like if I played someone who was 90 or 80 or a qualifier that was sort of the lower end of getting in, was is is a, a tough match for me right now because I don't have loads of wins. 
my match experience at coming back is still low. So it's sort of any match is a is a tough match. But like you say, Yannick is is um, sort of the tougher matches out there, especially playing in the first week. Probably feel like actually playing him would help me a little bit in this first round, but nothing nothing like um, to you know. It doesn't help me loads. It just helps me a little bit because I've actually played him and seen his game style. Um, but it is it is a tough first round, um, and yeah, I've just got to go on them. Um, it's my second best of five as well in a very long time. And the New York, I did okay, but I felt like in the third just faded a little bit, ran out, and um, I'm wanting this time putting a lot of physical work. So hopefully I can. Um, play the match a lot better in terms of consistency of my physical uh, performance and obviously my game I'd like to to do well so I'm I'm going on there to looking to really assert myself um, and then problem solve during the match as, as I go along and and see how it goes. What has um, Jack Draper got to do to beat Rafa Nadal? I don't know I mean it's, I've never beaten Rafa so I played him once and I practiced with him maybe twice. Um, I think without really knowing, you just have to do a lot of things very well or extremely well, probably the best you've ever done it. So um, ask Cam, he knows. So I, don't, I honestly don't know Jack in, him, in himself from his results, um, how he's been the last year and the start of this year is, is good. So. He, it's more of a case like what you feel, I think, inside, like how he wants to play. Um, but for sure, when you come to these big tournaments and you probably play Rafa on Rod Laver, it's also the, the experience in the occasion, surroundings that play a factor. But um, I think right now Jack knows m more than anyone else what, you know, what he's feeling and what he wants to do against Rafa. I saw you did an interview with Mike Dixon and he talked about the woman who came up to you in the supermarket and yeah. said she thought you'd retire. Was that a bit of a jolt when, when that happened? No, it was more... Um, I, I forgot what Mike asked me, but it was more the time out. It had been sort of that long. Um, always a question, something along those lines. So, um, yeah, it was... I didn't... Uh, it wasn't like I was gone or very disappointed about it, but the the main thing was like I'd been out that long that uh, she had thought that. So I don't, yeah, I don't know. I knew I'd been out a long time anyway. It was too long for me, so it was just one of those those things, and it was a bit of kick up the ass to get back. But when you say you're managing your body, and managing your knees, is it more of a obviously it's a scheduling thing? But in terms of training, mm -hmm. what adjustments have you made? Is a specific exercise as you sort of load, you're not putting onto it or in the in the gym it's very uh focused on on knee stuff and loading. Um it's been such a long time that I've developed a very sort of good understanding of my knee and what it like and what it doesn't like, um, what exercises it doesn't uh, doesn't agree with and what it really responds to. So it's stuff like that, really. Load management is a big thing. Um, and ultimately, tennis is a very unforgiving sport in that way, where it's just constant load on the knees, jarring, long hours of it. It takes long hours to prepare for tennis. And then you've got to go on court as well. Um, it's a long calendar, week after week. So it's a lot of stuff like that where you... Ideally, I'd like to just go on court and play and not think about it. But the reality is, I will have to to think about those sort of things. Um, and yeah, look, it's just stuff like that in the gym. I have to be more conscious of it. I have to look after it, recovery as well with it. Um, I haven't played lots of tournaments, and for a long time, my training was felt like very much like a tightrope. Um, it's a lot better now. I can go and play every day, but um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I feel like my mindset now when I'm playing, I always have to deal with it. But who knows? In years to come, I may get to a point where it's like it feels really good, and I'm not having to think about it all the time. So, um, but for now, it's 
whatever I need to do to get on court and playing, that's that's what I'll be doing. Do you, one more question. Do, do you think the, the last few years have, have changed you as a person in, in any way? Like, like when you look back at the car from 2018, yeah. is that different, a different person in, in any way? Yeah, I've always um, never thought of myself as being uh, a person that takes things for granted, but certainly when you don't have them, you're well more aware of them. Um, so yeah, there's certainly playing in your early twenties on the professional tour, um, and then you take that gap off. You sort of realise what what uh, your life was about, and then when you don't have it. But like I said, the first question, you're just really grateful to be on because then you you have the feeling or experience of not having tennis anymore, and being like, well, one day I'm not I'm gonna I'm not gonna have tennis permanently. Like that's it. I'm retired. So. Um, having that sort of feeling makes you grateful to come back again. Um, at the minute, I'm getting in on the tournaments on my protected ranking. So I'll play the big tournaments like here and French and Wimbledon. Um, but once they run out, then I'll need to get in and on my own right again. So you certainly, uh, yeah, it's like you're more, well more aware of that than before. And just little things like uh, never had to sort of <laughs> think about finance stuff because you're always playing and in a fortunate position to to have good income. But then when you don't play and you don't get any income for sort of, I think it was like, well, a tournament to tournament, 18, 20 months, uh, you're more you're aware of that again. So there are little things that you, you pick up like that. So being back here, you certainly take it in more. Um, I think more than I did before. Thank you. Thank you.